What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to another Code Peterson tutorial. We're doing some more GB Studio, and this is part three of the mini series of how to create a simple shoot 'em up with GB Studio. In our first tutorial, we created our level layout and we brought in our uh, image sprites and kind of added some parallax scrolling to it. In the second tutorial, we added these enemies onto the screen and made it where if our character collides with them, then we start at the beginning. And we have some custom motion with that. There's some parallax scrolling, a little bit of everything with this to get us started. And for tutorial three today, we are going to be using some mechanism to where we could launch a projectile to destroy these enemies and then maybe incorporate that with a power up type method with it also. So with all that, I think we are ready uh, to get this thing rolling. We'll select our level here, our scene one. And if I add an event, and we are searching for attach script to button, and then we will it really doesn't matter here which one we use, A or B. I'll just leave it for B for right now uh, because currently we're not using any of those buttons for this. And then override the button. And we will add an event. Let's find launch projectile. All right, that gives us this option here for on press. and in our sprite sheet, we can click on this, and one of them that we have is a football. And then the animation state, we'll use default. And for the speed, I suppose we can start off with a speed of two for this. That'd probably be okay. And animation speed, we'll leave it four. And for the lifetime, this will be a value we'll play around with to see... Um, how fast it takes to go from point A to point B on that. Uh, then we'll have loop animation and destroy on hit. And this is going to be a collision group. Let's say this will be a collision group of three. And we want to say collide with one. And if you remember back to our last tutorial, these enemies we created, we gave them all a collision group of one. So that's kind of how that works with this. All right, now if we go over here to actor one, and we select that over here in our prefabs, three, add event, deactivate actor, and deactivate actor, Self. And then we can go here to actor two and on hit with group three. We'll deactivate actor self. Here, deactivate actor self. All right, let's give this a try and see how this works. There we go. So that beats that enemy right there. And if I launch this football, it doesn't quite make it all the way to the end. So going back here to our level and finding our projectile here, maybe the lifetime to go two seconds. And maybe for the animation speed, it is kind of spinning slowly. So I might give this a animation speed of six. We can see how that works. Hey, that looks pretty good. Now, obviously, when we 
fly through here and we do that, that makes it a little bit easy to shoot those footballs. So something we could do is maybe on this level here, we could add a actor. I'll put this actor down here. And this actor is going to be the a floating football. I could use a different one if I wanted, but I think this will be fine for uh, what we're doing with this here. And for the movement speed, we could have it be moving relatively slow. And if we give this a collision group of two, and we'll say on hit with player, we'll deactivate the actor, and we're going to deactivate that football that we have. And then we also want to maybe add um, like a variable that's going to allow us to have a certain amount of footballs that we can throw for this. So maybe here we're going to go variable set to value. We'll click on that. And then there's this little drop down menu here. We can click that and we can go to global variable and we'll select variable zero. And then we will rename this as footballs. And we'll say this variable is going to be equal to three. All right, now, if we go back over here to our level and we have on press with this projectile, we can add a compare variable with value. And we'll say if, and then we'll just drop down and we're going to find footballs is. Boolean, or not Boolean, um, comparison, sorry. And we want to go if it is greater than zero. You can click and drag this. If football is greater than zero, we'll place this right here into this event on press. So now when we press B, then and our footballs is greater than zero. Uh, and then I'm going to move this launch projectile right into this true statement. And let's see how that works for us. Okay, not firing any weapons right now up the football and now it's allowing us to fire them okay now it's still letting us fire an infinite amount of those and that is because we need to change that variable each time that we fire one of those so if footballs is greater than zero then it's going to launch that projectile and then we are going to add a vent right after that and we're going to search for decrement, variable decrement by one. Go here to our variables and we'll search for footballs variable. All right, we're not firing anything right now. It's football. Okay, we fired all three of those. And now we are out on there. 
if we pick up a football here, you can see it'll remember that we still have those at this point because we used a global variable for that. So if that's something that you don't want to happen, you could always say on our level, uh, on init, you could always add an event at the very top and say set variable to value and have your footballs equal to zero at the very start of the level. Now, once you have that done, then you could maybe put another power up in there. Make sure that they work properly. And then it works again. So that's using projectiles. And then also if, you know, depending if you want it to be an unlimited amount or if you want to have it activated with some kind of a power up. Uh, and then if you want it to be a certain amount, then how you can control those with variables. I think in our next one that we're going to do, we will start a kind of looking beyond the basic level of flying through and shooting things and getting power-ups. And we'll look at how uh, we could incorporate a boss level with this that um, throws a few wrinkles into the gameplay element for us. So hopefully this uh, gives you some more things to play around with. Hopefully it is useful. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments section. Uh, like and subscribe if you want more content like this. I appreciate you all taking time to watch and we'll hopefully catch you on tutorial number four of creating our Game Boy shoot 'em up.